On Tuesday, September 4, 2012, congressional candidate Tammy Duckworth, Illinois 8th District, was interviewed on the Don Wade and Roma Show, WLS 890 AM in Chicago. Tammy Duckworth was asked a simple question. Are Americans better off now than they were four years ago? What about uh, the average person who, who isn't, uh, you know, in a government, uh, you know, paycheck receiving position, you know, just the average person? Sure. Well, I've talked to businesses in my district, um, and I was out touring a, 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 district, uh, a business in the district just recently, and they said that they at one point were down to a single shift, and they're back up to three shifts now, um, that uh, things are, business is picking up for them. Is it ideal where they want to be? No, but it is a heck of a lot better than where they were. But yeah. then why is our unemployment higher than four years ago? Well, I know that in my district, where I am hoping to represent, um, things are picking up. Things are picking up? Really? Has Tammy Duckworth even bothered to look outside each of her three campaign headquarters in the 8th District? I don't think so. So we took a look. And look what we saw right outside of Tammy's three buildings. Campaign Headquarters 1. Let's look at where the arrow is pointing in front of building number 1, located at 5105 Tollview Drive in Rowing Meadows, Illinois. Campaign Headquarters 2. And what's that in front of building 2, located at 506 Westgate Drive in Addison, Illinois? Campaign Headquarters 3. And what's right next door to building number 3? located at 15 Douglas Avenue in Elgin, Illinois. Do you think that Tammy even notices what's happening on her own street in Rowing Meadows? This is Tollview Drive in Rowing Meadows, the same street where Tammy Duckworth's campaign headquarters are located. Driving further on Tollview Drive, we see an industrial area that is abandoned and neglected. Only empty office space, overgrown grass, and the shelves of failed businesses remain. The highly sought after manufacturing jobs are gone. The business district that once supported Rowing Meadows residents now supports no one. And the only thing that is still thriving on Tammy Street are weeds and rust. Do you think Tammy knows what is going on down her own street in Addison? This is Westgate Drive in Addison, home to Tammy Duckworth's second campaign office. Empty parking lots, unkept landscapes, and dilapidated buildings now line Tammy Street. The parking spaces that were used daily in the small business district are no longer filled by the cars of employees. The driveways and truck bays that once welcomed local suppliers, vendors, and customers have now been taken over by weeds and crabgrass. Do you think Tammy knows what's occurring on her block in Elgin? Tammy's Elgin campaign office sits adjacent to a closed business. The Lathe Building, which once housed a thriving business and spacious living space for Elgin residents, now sits empty. Four sale, four rent, and four lease signs fill the windows in the Elgin business district. Are things really picking up for the small business owner who had a close-up shop? the landlords that have no tenants to rent to, and the unemployed workers who can't find a job? Is Tammy Duckworth really that out of touch with what is going on in the 8th District? Is she equally out of touch with what is going on in America? Are we really better off now than we were four years ago? Today, 12,544,000 Americans are officially unemployed. Unofficially, if we go by the U6 rate and count all the people who are underemployed or who gave up looking for work, that figure is closer to 15 million. Then there's the national debt, which just topped $16 trillion. Every man, woman, and child in the United States currently owes $52,812 for their share of the U.S. public debt. If that's not something that gives you pause, let's take a look at the skyrocketing cost of groceries. A gallon of milk has increased 113% from four years ago. A pound of butter, 166%. A pound of rice, 
82%, and so on, and so on, and so on. If paying for staples has you strapped, what about the cost of college? Will your kids have to take out more student loans to pay for their college education? They sure will. According to the 2012 How America Pays for College study, the average college student paid a larger share of the cost of his or her education through work and student loans in the 2011-12 academic year than four years prior. The study, released by student loan giant Sally May back in July 2012, stated that the college student paid at least 18% of the cost of college through loans last year, up from 14% in the 2008-2009 academic year. Unfortunately, the failed policies Tammy supports actually make more Americans dependent on government. And the federal takeover of GM, healthcare, the student loan program, and its meddling in other industries is leading us off a fiscal cliff. That's why in a recent poll, 52% of likely voters stated that overall, our country is in worse condition now than it was four years ago. So I guess what I would really like to know is who Tammy thinks things are picking up for. Could it be government? Let's listen to what Tammy told Don and Roma about the VA. I probably would be running again, um, but really for me, the deciding factor was, um, you know, that sitting in my office at midnight getting ready to shut down the VA. You're talking about the, sequest the, the sequestration where they were, they hit the tripwire and everybody had to cut. Well, no, this was, you know, we couldn't agree to a budget. Um, this was uh, about 18 months ago, a little more than that. Um, and uh, we, it came up to midnight uh, before there was a last minute compromise. But, you know, at 11.55, I was sitting in my office uh, getting ready to tell uh, 23 million veterans that they probably weren't going to get their benefits on time. And, you know, all yeah. the VA employees telling them, oh, you don't get to come into work tomorrow because apparently providing services to veterans is not considered, you know, something that is uh, vital. And, and it just pissed me off. I mean, it pissed me, both sides pissed me off, to be honest. Does Tammy think it's okay to play games with taxpayer money? When our national debt is $16 trillion? When 5.5 million Americans are unemployed? When more than 47 million Americans are on food stamps? Tammy, you may be a war hero, but with all due respect, that hope and change we voted for four years ago has not worked out like we expected. So please stop trying to convince us that we are moving forward when everything suggests that we are no better off now than we were four years ago. We need to get small businesses working again to keep the American dream alive for future generations. That's why we need Joe Walsh to stay in DC representing the 8th District. That's why the National Federation of Independent Business Owners endorses Joe Walsh for re-election to U.S. Congress. In fact, on August 27, 2012, in a press release, the National Federation of Independent Businesses announced its support for the re-election of freshman lawmaker Joe Walsh in the North Shore 8th Congressional District. They said, Joe Walsh is one of the most energetic and passionate defenders of small business and free market policies in Congress. Quote, he's done big things for small business and our members are counting on him to keep up the fight in Washington. NFIB is the country's leading small business advocate with more than 11,000 members in Illinois. On the issues identified by NFIB members as critically important to small business, Walsh has a very strong voting record, end quote.